What's up guys, Mike here coming at you again. This time I've got a video for you about winter hiking and at least what I've learned specifically when it comes to winter hiking clothing. Um, I apologize off the bat if you can tell. I'm a little bit stuffy. I'm just getting over having a cold or a flu or something. I did take the COVID test, came back negative. I'm going to be taking another one very shortly, which will probably come back negative. I wanted to give you guys a video, uh, at least give you something about what I've learned in my couple weeks of winter hiking in this very first season. I've got a handful of hikes in the cold under my belt right now, uh, and I wanted to share my experiences with you because there was a lot of unknowns going into my very first winter hike, and I was a bit nervous doing it. And I, I'm very aware of frostbite, and... <laughs> I don't want to get hypothermia. I figured this might be valuable for you and maybe it will throw you some ideas that you haven't thought of before. Specifically, I'm going to be talking about the clothing that I bring because for me that was always the biggest unknown. And uh, over the over this course of these past couple weeks where I've gone on multiple winter hikes, I've learned a lot more about what I need uh, for my body type because a lot of people can tend to run differently. You can run hot or you can run cold. If I hit a hill within a minute, I guarantee you I will be sweating. So I tend to run pretty hot. And because of that, my selection of clothing is different than what other people might be. Everybody's body, everybody's uh, systems are different. So I want you to be aware that the first couple times you go, it's going to be kind of like an experiment. And you want it to be as safe of an experiment as possible so the first thing that I learned was to make sure I bring extra stuff. Whatever I wanted to bring or try out, made sure, make sure I have extra of it. I always had an extra pair of socks. I had an extra hat. I also had an extra pair of gloves. I brought a lot of extra stuff with me on that very first hike and actually my subsequent hikes as well because I still wasn't 100% sure when or where I would need it. Another key thing when I say about bringing extra stuff is make sure you bring extra stuff of making it different kind of like warmth levels. So uh, for instance, the gloves I have, I kind of have a lighter pair of gloves that I brought and then a heavier pair of gloves that I brought. And that way you can experiment on which ones you need because you'll find out pretty quickly certain situations where you want to wear the light gloves and then certain situations where you want to wear the heavy gloves. So that's one thing I learned. Um, for sure, is to make sure you bring extra stuff, different warmth layers throughout the throughout it. The gloves is just one example. Then you will learn exactly what type of situation you will need this piece of equipment for, this piece of clothing. Another big benefit for me that I learned uh, throughout all of this winter hiking thing is staying away from cotton. Cotton is is not good for anything outdoors in the cold. Now in the summer, maybe it's a different story because Cotton will really hold onto the moisture and hold onto the wet. You get sweaty, that moisture, it retains it. Then you decide to stop for a couple minutes to take a break, grab something to eat, or just enjoy the view. All of a sudden, that cotton will start to freeze because it loses the heat that your body is generating while you're moving. I kind of knew that from my cycling days because I would never wear anything cycling-wise that had cotton on it. You want to stick with the polyester, the wool, the spandex, the elastic, elastatine, I think that's what it's called, elastatine, elastatine, I don't know how to say it, plus I'm congested too. Those types of materials are the ones that, type, that will wick the moisture away, uh, and they're also very fast drying as well, so if they do get wet, uh, they will dry really quickly. I'll regale a quick little story about when I went on my first winter hike in the whites, we were hiking Mount Hancock, my shoe slipped. Uh, when we were crossing one of the rivers and got in the river, it got my sock a little bit wet. And I was really, really worried about getting frostbite on that. Within half an hour, the thing was dry because we were going up the hill and I was moving a lot. It dried up really, really fast. So that was the number two thing I learned is you want to pay attention to the material of the stuff that you're bringing, not just what type it is. I mean, there are cotton thermals that can be very, very warm, but when you're out on the trail, that's probably like one of the worst things that you could actually have. The third thing I learned from this was the layering system. The general consensus is you have what they call base layer, then you have a mid layer on top of that, then you have a top layer. Those are pretty much the three bare minimum layers that you would need. Now, there are some nuances to that which I'll get into, but those are the basic three that you would want. The base layer is essentially what it sounds like. It's the very first thing that your skin contacts with. And with the base layer, you want that to be able to wick moisture away. 
So as I mentioned in the previous section, cotton is not good for that. The mid layer, the same thing. You want that to be like another polyester type material or something fleece, something along those lines, which I think fleece is a type of polyester if I'm not mistaken, but you want that to be able to wick the moisture away as well. But in terms of the that layer, it's a going to be a little bit thicker and a little bit heavier. So it's going to capture some of that heat and keep it in you, uh, keep it in there. The top layer can be a little bit more confusing because this changes depending on what's going on around you. The most common setup that I have seen, at least when I see people hiking or when I talk to them or during all my reviews, was your top layer actually consisted of two things. It consisted of a puffy jacket and it consisted of a rain jacket or a wind jacket, essentially. And those two things are, are very different things. The puffy jacket was meant to retain the heat. The wind jacket was essentially meant to block the wind from hitting you. And of course, if it's raining, to not get you soaked. Because if you get soaked or if your puffy gets soaked, it's going to lose its thermal, uh, thermal capacity. It's going to lose its heat holding capabilities pretty quickly. Uh, but the important thing is, and this is the one thing that I learned with this whole layering system is, you want to make sure you have them on you because if you go out on the trail without them, you're basically asking for hypothermia at that point. And this is one thing that is not really talked about in my Mount Washington video because I didn't really, I didn't really talk about it. But this is one thing that I want to point out because this was crucial for me and I, if I didn't do this layering system, the Mount Washington hike probably would have gone a lot worse for me than it actually did. So when I, when I got to Mount Washington, actually on my way to drive up to Mount Washington, up to the trailhead, I realized while I was going driving that I forgot my rain jacket. So I stopped at a Marshalls nearby and got the first rain jacket that I saw. I was lucky that there was one that was open because it was a Sunday night, it was like 6, 7 o'clock at night, a lot of places were closing or already had closed. Lucky for me, it worked because if I didn't have the rain jacket, you could see in that Mount Washington video, I basically had it on the whole time because it was windy the whole entire time, especially once I got up to the top or anywhere near the top. So windy. If I did not have that jacket with me, I guarantee you I would have been struggling a lot more and I would have been at a much, much higher risk of some sort of hypothermia, some sort of level of hypothermia or even frostbite. If I did not have that jacket, when I got to the top, I guarantee you I would have taken the train down or asked somebody for a ride down. I would have not gone down by myself. But because of that, anyway, that was one thing that I learned and I want to pass that on to you. Make sure you always have some sort of layering system that's ready for something like that. Those are the three things that I learned the most about winter hiking in these past couple weeks. And I wanted to share them with you so this way you guys at least have some more knowledge when you're going out on the trail or at least if it's your first time, you can at least maybe sit back and think about these types of things because the winter hiking, it's no joke. You can get away with a lot more in the summer than you can in the winter. Anyway, I just wanted to impart that knowledge on you guys. Um, stay tuned for the video where I'm actually gonna go through each part of my body, each part of the clothing that I put on my body, keeping it G-weighted for, for YouTube here. I'm gonna go through each article of clothing that I have so you guys can see what I use when I'm out on the trail for these winter hikes. So make sure you subscribe, hit the little bell icon so you're notified when I post that video. And again, as always, I appreciate you guys, I appreciate the support. And if you found this video helpful, make sure to share with friends, family, or anybody else that might be interested in learning a little bit more about winter hiking. Alright guys, with that, peace out, until the next one.